Hi folks, uh, welcome to part two of my prostate cancer and me. My journey with prostate cancer. Um, I'll say again, as I did in part one, please support your chance cancer charities like in, U in the UK, that would be Cancer Research UK, Prostate Cancer UK, Macmillan Cancer Support, Marie Curie Nurses and the like, or your equivalent around the world. Um, this, uh, this video is from being referred to the urolo urology department at the local hospital. I ended the part one by just being referred from my general practitioner. So, my first important <coughs> appointment with the urology department, basically, <coughs> they asked me lots of questions about my general health, about any symptoms, all that kind of thing, um, and uh, ended with another rectal examination. Um, my GP had sent me there because <laughs> the way he... The way he phrased it was, he said, they have a far more experienced finger than me, because they do it every day. Anyway, uh, the young lady who carried out the um, interview said, uh, at the conclusion of, of the interview, the appointment, that this is not a diagnosis, but we are... <clears throat> you are now on a on a pathway which will involve several successive steps so I um, subsequently had an MRI scan and then I think just uh, and then I had a biopsy after that and then I had a bone scan. Now, the when I went back to the hospital for the results of these, I uh, was shown the MRI scan results, which actually showed some cancer in the prostate. Um, the biopsy came back with positive cancer results. In other words, anyone who doesn't know a biopsy means they take bits of it for analysis. And physically take pieces for analysis. Um, and it meant that something had to be had to be done about it. Now the MRI is a piece of cake, you just lay in a tube with some headphones on to stop the noise and um, have to keep very still for while it's happening and uh, but the biopsy is an invasive procedure and it's it's okay for, but it's not exactly pleasant um, the rectum is actually forced open to a point of discomfort and and then it is all done the biopsy is taken via your rectum because the prostate lays between the bowel and the, and the bladder so that's the easiest way they can take pieces from it um, local anesthetic is used and then they somehow snip at least a dozen little pieces off. The prostate has two sides, so they take uh, six or I don't know if that had six or twelve from each side. I don't know. Anyway, tiny pieces taken from each side. And then uh, at the conclusion of this, they insert a antibiotic suppository. And uh, most humorous thing, they, they, they don't actually allow you to leave because this isn't done in a day surgery, it's just done 
in a matter of an hour or two, okay? Um, they don't allow you to leave the department until you've actually been and had a P to prove that you're functioning, you know? Well, well <laughs> the humorous part was that uh, as I was standing having a pee, the antibiotic suppository fell out. <laughs> and so uh, rather than call a nurse or have any more embarrassing episodes, um, I washed it under the tap and shoved it back in again myself. Anyway. So then I, after that, I had a follow up appointment to give me the results of all these things. And now, the, when you have a biopsy, the results come back and you have a thing known as a Gleason score. A Gleason score. And this really tells you how likely it is for the cancer to grow quickly and aggressively. Now you hear the story, I mean, when, when, you, when, you, uh, when you first start to talk about cancer, it appears that everyone you know knows someone who has either got it, has it, or whatever, you know? Seems like everyone has got it. Now, you hear this story all the time that, oh, well, it grows so slowly, there's no worry about it. it uh, if, you're, if you're of a certain age, you'll probably die of something else before, it, before you die of that, you know? Now that can be true in some cases, as I have a, a neighbour in, in, in the mid 80s who's just having hormone treatments to keep it down all the time and uh, he's going to be okay until he dies of something else. But that's not always the case. Hence this Gleason score thing. It scores, you have two sides to the prostate, so you have two results kind of, right? And each side scores five maximum. Now, and this score is to how likely it is to progress quickly. So therefore, if you have a maximum score of five on either side, that's a maximum Gleason score of 10. Okay? I score, feeling perfectly comfortable, you know, no problems, anything probably not even be diagnosed at all. I would have it not know about it if I had not gone to the doctor in the first place. My Gleason score was a four and a five, which means that I scored nine out of 10 for being fast growing. Okay. Now, in the literature, it says that you need to be you need to be um, referred and, and obviously have treatment or whatever if you have a high PSA or a high Gleason score. Now, a lot of doctors don't have too much credence in the in the um, PSA test because it is not reliable. Uh, it, and it can be different things. So they say, oh, well, if your PSA is not too high, it's not worth putting you through the unpleasant procedure of having a biopsy and, and further investigation, right? But it's either a high PSA or a high Gleason score. Unless you have a biopsy, you're not going to get a Gleason score in the first place. So basically, if you have concerns, get referred. My PSA, remember, was only seven, which was not enough to ring serious alarm bells. But when it came to getting my Gleason score from the biopsy, it wasn't high enough. It was high enough to ring, ring alarm bells. Okay? Now, my my when I had the, um, uh, now the, the, the purpose of the bone scan, which luckily in my case was clear, this is a biggie, because 
when a cancer spreads from outside the prostate to another part of the body, it usually goes to the bones first from, from the prostate. So therefore, if you have a clear bone scan, it means, most likely, it means that your cancer has not spread, which is obviously is a big thing. Um, my cancer had just started to spread into the tubules just outside the prostate, but not gone anywhere else. So if I'd left it longer, it would have, but it was only just starting to progress outside the prostate, which means it was still contained. Now, when I had the results and I saw the consultant, uh, he he said, showed me showed me the cancer on the MRI, discussed everything. He said he would not recommend. I suppose this is before because it had just started to seep outside the prostate. He would not recommend surgery and removal of the prostate because he didn't think he'd be able to get it all. I know two people who have had theirs removed and they still had to go back and have radiotherapy afterwards because um, they needed to clean up the area. Uh, they didn't get it all, 100%. Anyway, so the three options they usually give you is, if it's not too bad, to watch and wait to see how it goes like. My friend of mine who has now got his results after 10 years and he is clear, told me in the first place when I was diagnosed, don't watch and wait. He said, because I know two people who've done that and they are no longer with us. So anyway, however, my consultant did not give me that option of watch and wait, radiotherapy or surgery. They were the three options, but the only option he gave me was radiotherapy. Um, and the aim was that radiotherapy should, could, should cure me. It's not a time delaying thing or anything. The radiotherapy is a cure. Um, catching it. I caught it early enough. Um, so we opted for radiotherapy. Um, that's probably had gone on long enough now. So I'll call it a day there. I opted for radiotherapy. Part three will tell you about my experiences with the radiotherapy and uh, the story so far. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope this helps anyone in a similar situation.